in this lecture we are going to be talking about the next important phase in the life cycle of the project namely project appraisal. Project appraisal is a very important part because it determines the effectiveness of the project and it makes sure that you have in fact chosen the right kind of project for implementation and all the subsequent success of the project in its right implementation is then governed by this particular stage. In our last lecture we had looked at the problem of project selection in some detail and we had in fact seen that project identification was the first stage where ideas were generated and these ideas after being generated were subjected to a preliminary screening and you came up with a list of worthwhile ideas and this list of worthwhile ideas now has to be investigated in greater detail through what we call a project appraisal and it is this project appraisal that we are going to be talking about in this particular lecture. In fact, as I indicated to you in the earlier lecture, project appraisal is a very necessary part of preparing a project feasibility report. And as you know, any large project involving good amount of capital investment has to have a project feasibility report which is going to study whether the project is worthwhile as far as the demand is concerned, as far as the financial implications are concerned and as far as the socio-economic implications are concerned and the ecological considerations are concerned. So basically a project appraisal is essentially a consideration of the market analysis, the demand analysis for the product, the financial analysis, the economic analysis, the technical analysis, the socio-economic analysis as well as the ecological analysis of the project. And obviously the techniques would vary depending upon the kind of project which is involved and uh, but we will spell out the broad guidelines for undertaking a project appraisal. Once the project is appraised, the next stage is the stage of project selection where after having a detailed analysis done of the various performance parameters of the project, we would like to select the one project which is probably the best. So this is the whole idea in the whole in this exercise. Let us try to recapitulate briefly what we had done when we were talking about the project identification phase. You saw that the project identification phase was actually governed by the objectives that you are setting out to achieve and these objectives uh, along with the analysis of the strengths and weaknesses the opportunities and threats which exist in the market both from the internal environment or the system or the external environment uh, existing would have to be taken into consideration in a brainstorming session to identify various project possibilities. And these project possibilities after screening on various important criteria would give you the candidate project proposals. And these candidate project proposals are the essential input to the project appraisal phase which we are talking about. Now just to gain some idea about the criteria because after all an appraisal has to be based on some criteria. In fact uh, even the screening phase of uh, project identification used very many criteria and these were very relevant criteria. So let us uh, it is worthwhile to look at this list again. These criteria would be things like investment or rate of return, the risk, the likely profit, the payback, similarity to existing business 
this could be an important criteria for an entrepreneur who is probably thinking in terms of setting up a new venture. So he would probably like to utilize his experience, the expected life of the project, the amount of flexibility. I think flexibility is emerging as a very dominant uh, objective these days primarily because the markets are very dynamic and you would like all production systems or all projects to be able to respond quickly to changes in the market. Customer tastes can vary, production requirements can vary and therefore a system which has flexibility would be a worthwhile one. The environmental impact of various projects, the state of competition are all factors which are important when you are trying to appraise a particular project. As I indicated to you earlier, the project appraisal could conventionally be divided into number one a market appraisal. The purpose of a market appraisal is to identify the market for the product, to identify who the customers are and to find out the quantum of demand and also the nature of demand whether it is a static demand, whether it is a fluctuating demand, are there any seasonal considerations in demand and these kinds of issues which are very, very relevant there. It is not only this, but it is also trying to identify who are the other players in the system of the total demand, who are the other players in the system meaning what is your market share likely to be and what is the nature of competition is your market share likely to be affected by an aggressive advertisement campaign or a policy of this nature. All these issues become very relevant when you are trying to do a market appraisal of a project. Followed by the uh, follows the technical appraisal, the technical appraisal looks after the engineering aspects of the pro project, whether the project is worthwhile have right decisions be taken with regard to the location, the size, the processes and so on and whether the whole thing is viable from a technical point of view. The financial appraisal which is generally one of the most important appraisals in the appraisal of the project in fact is concerned with things like return on investment, what are the risks involved what is the profitability, what is the debt service uh, capability of the project and issues pertaining to uh, financial implications which are there with the project. A socio-economic appraisal in a project is generally concerned with issues which are affecting the society at large setting up of a Heidel project for instance could displace a large number of people from their homes. So there is a social cost associated with that. A project of this nature could also result in redistribution of income among the society. So we have to, we have to be concerned about those things and it is essentially an evaluation on the shadow costs which is relevant in the socio-economic appraisal. Ecological appraisal which is assuming prominence these days because the world is concerned about the environment, you could be worried about the depletion in the ozone layer or you could be concerned about the poor quality of air or about various kinds of emissions which might uh, pollute the water or noise pollution. All these in are aspects which have to be considered and they might be more important for some projects than for others. Let us now look at the issues involved in these various kinds of appraisals in a little greater detail. By and large, the market appraisal of a project is actually concerned with two broad questions. These questions are number one, what would be the aggregate demand of the proposed product or service? 
So, you are talking about the total demand for a product or service which your project intends to produce. And the second issue is what would be the market share of the project under appraisal. So, you have to basically conduct a an analysis to establish what the total demand is and uh, because that is going to be the lion's share and then you have got to estimate how much of the total demand are you in a position to capture that is the market share and both these things are dynamic you could be changing they could be changing and uh, it might be very difficult to estimate these things especially with regard to products which are new right. For instance what might happen is something like this let us take an example of an existing product. So, this is an existing product so it probably has some kind of a demand history I mean the product demand and let us say this is the time now the current time we are here. Now, the problem of finding out the total demand would be to see into the future look into the future it would be very difficult to find out what is going to happen in the future. But at least you might say you might consult people and they might say ok there could be a growth of 5 percent or the demand could remain stagnant or the demand could in fact be falling. So, we could think in terms of either an optimistic scenario or a most likely scenario or a pessimistic scenario and at least try to estimate these kinds of trends of demand as you go along and in making these estimates you can use forecasting techniques, you can use for instance regression, you can use exponential smoothing moving averages, you can use various kinds of causal models because you have the advantage of history that is going to be available with you and therefore, forecasting the demand and the market share for existing products is generally simple and you can uh, use the various demand forecasting methods which are available. But if you talk about a new product you have nothing here it is a vacuum there is nothing available here you do not know what happened here because it was not in existence. So, you got to now take a jump and estimate as to what the demand is going to be. So, these are more wild guesses you do not know what is going to happen. So, the success of these guesses is open to a greater amount of uncertainty as compared to the guesses that you made in the case when you had existing products. However, even in situations like this you can take recourse to expert opinions, you can take recourse to methods like Delphi questionnaire surveys, opinion polls and things of that kind and essentially try to get the opinions from different knowledgeable people and see try to make some kind of estimates here. So, these are actually issues which one has to keep in mind when is one is trying to do a market survey. Another way to look at the whole problem in the market analysis is something like this. The market survey would probably establish there are two important parameters one is what the total demand is. So, the total demand itself is fluctuating and your share of the demand what slice you get out of the total cake that share itself could be fluctuating it could be going up or going down depending upon how maybe your company has performed over the past. And so, this problem is actually a quite a tricky problem of trying to estimate first how the total demand changes and then how the overall share could diminish or increase depending upon how it is. So, some estimates of this nature uh, constitute the basis of a market appraisal. Let us try to look at some of the major issues which uh, are involved in a market appraisal. In a market appraisal of a project we would be interested in past and current demand trends. What has been the demand like in the past? 
has it been erratic, has it been stagnant, has it shown a steady increase or a steady decrease and things of this nature and based on that what are going to be the, uh, what are the current trends in the demand. Similarly, an understanding of the past and current supply position, this is also very important. I mean uh, if you are for instance a operating in a monopolistic situation, then you might not really concern, might not be concerned about this really. But then uh, if there are multiple suppliers and uh, you got to find out what the total supply is, whether you are falling short of the demand, what is the potential in the market and things of this kind, this becomes an important uh, subject for analysis. What are the various production possibilities and the constraints? This would be another issue when you are trying to talk about market appraisal. You could talk about what are the likelihood of imports and exports in this area. You could be talking about the nature of competition. You see the nature of competition means uh, for instance how are the important players which are there in the game, how are they in terms of their capabilities with regard to you, that is the nature of competition. You see for instance when the multinationals came on the scene in India, many of the small scale entrepreneurs vanished and they were forced to close down because the competition was so severe and these uh, multinational companies could actually afford to launch the kind of aggressive tactics which the small entrepreneurs would not be able to withstand. So, one has to be clear about what is the nature of competition and what kinds of policies uh, can be adopted by them, what is the existing cost structure of the various factors, what is the elasticity of demand. This again is a very important question because how does the price respond to demand or how does the demand respond to the price. If you change the price, is there going to be a change in the demand for products or not. One would generally expect that for essential commodities, the demand would not be affected by price or would be affected only marginally by price. But maybe for luxury goods, it could be affected to a much greater extent. So, these are some of the issues which uh, one would have to talk about when one is talking about a market appraisal. Then there would be other issues like uh, what is the consumer behavior? What are the factors on which the consumer bases the decision to buy a particular, that particular product? So, we would talk about the motivations of the consumer, his attitudes, his preferences, his requirements, what distribution channels exist in the market for shipping the product. Do you have a network of distributors spread out in all the cities of the country to distribute the product or are you going to have a central one person who is probably one person or agency which is going to coordinate this for you. So, as far as the distribution channels are concerned, you should be concerned about marketing policies. You should also be talking about administrative, technical and legal constraints which might be there in the system. You see these could become very important because uh, government may have imposed certain restrictions on certain kinds of product projects and certain kinds of products and these would therefore govern the operation of the market as far as those are concerned and an awareness of them should be there at least when you are trying to look at the project as a whole. You are going to determine the marketing environment for the project, you should be concerned about these issues. Let us now talk about the technical appraisal of a project.
obviously I think as the name uh, clarifies the technical appraisal is more concerned with the engineering aspects and uh, the fact that you are you trying to utilize the proper economies of scale, have you chosen an efficient design and things of this type. So, basically we are talking again about these two major issues. One, the first issue is whether the prerequisites for the success of the project have been considered broadly in terms of looking at the project as a whole. And then secondly, have good choices been made with regard to location, size, process, machines, etcetera in the overall project selection exercise. So, we some of the things that can be done therefore, in this case some of the major issues in the technical appraisal would be to find out whether the preliminary tests and studies have been done. What would this mean? This would essentially mean for instance that in making the building have the soil tests been done, is the structure of the building adequate to cope up with the soil strength and is the design adequate right these kinds of issues. So, then we would be concerned with things like availability of raw materials, power and other inputs. Now, this is a very important thing to check because we would like to make sure that all the raw materials which are needed for running the project or the product or the factory in whatever way the power and the other kinds of inputs are in fact available. So, just trying to make a check that uh, these things are available or could be procured at that for that particular project. Are you operating at the optimal scale of operations which would mean that have you made the right decisions in terms of uh, the size sizes that you have chosen the level at which you want to operate. It might be uneconomical to operate a pro process at a very low level. Similarly, maybe at a very high level also it might not be economical to operate a process. So, are you trying to make sure that you are operating your processes at the optimum levels? These kinds of things are important when you are trying to do a technical appraisal. Have you made the right choice for suitable production processes? A particular product may be made by a number of different processes. Different processes would have different requirements. So, there would be economic considerations of course, but there would be other technical considerations in terms of the quality of the product that you may be getting. So, have you made the right choices there? This becomes an important issue and have you made an appropriate choice of the machines and equipment which is going to be needed for that kind of project. So, this is uh, something very vital when you are trying to do a technical appraisal. Some of the other factors which are important when you are talking about a technical appraisal are have you ensured that there is a proper arrangement for disposal of effluents and waste. This is very important should try to have a proper system. I mean is your chimney of the right uh, height? Are you trying to dispose of your smoke at the appropriate level so that you do not uh, pollute the atmosphere beyond what is actually permitted by law maybe. So, considerations like these are important. Do you have a proper layout of plant and buildings? This becomes again very very important aspect because after all if you have a poor layout of a plant and a building you are unnecessarily going to have much greater effort in terms of movement of men and materials and this is going to be a lifelong affair. So, a wrong decision of a layout is going to have costs in terms of movement of men and materials uh, maybe you have more of movement of men and materials and you would probably like to curb that down. Have you set up realistic work schedules? 
and this is also a very important technical aspect. I mean even in the setting up of a work plan, somebody might say that we will erect this machine and do the whole thing in 5 days, you have got to make sure that it is realistic, it is probably not possible to do it in 5 days, you might have to spend much more time on this. So, make sure that your schedules are as realistic as possible, this is again a for instance uh, you should not be uh, tempted when somebody says I can set up the project in maybe one month and it can give you 1 lakh rupees per week or something like that. You must get convinced that in fact the project would start earning revenue after this much period of time and that is a very important part of the technical appraisal. Do you have a socially acceptable technology? I think uh, concern for human welfare is assuming greater and greater importance as uh, society is becoming more educated and therefore this is an important thing. So, these are therefore some of the major issues involved when one is talking about an economic or sorry a technical appraisal of a project. Let us now talk about the economic appraisal of the project or the socio-economic aspects in the appraisal. In fact, uh, we will talk about an economic or a socio-economic appraisal, I will uh, be talking about the financial appraisal later on because uh, that probably deserves a whole uh, separate treatment. So, we will talk about that later. One of the things here is what is generally known as social cost benefit analysis. Social cost benefit analysis addresses these issues of how the project is going to affect the society at large. It might displace some people, it might provide opportunities for employment for a large number of people and so on. So, there are both benefits and costs associated with the project at a social level. So, investigation of these costs not from the monetary point of view, but on what is likely to be the benefit of setting up let us say a Heidel power project to the people that are going to be displaced in that sense. So, these kinds of issues are becoming very relevant. So, we are actually concerned about the direct economic benefits and costs in terms of the shadow prices. You all know what is a shadow price do you? You know how does a shadow price differ from a the market price of a product? You know in linear programming for instance, when you talk about the shadow price of a particular constraint, what does it mean the dual variable or the shadow price? The implication is that what is the contribution of increasing that particular resource level to the overall objective function. So, use that interpretation when you are doing a social cost benefit analysis. What is the benefit of occupying so much of land in a certain project to the overall objective function and is that benefit actually more than the cost then it is worthwhile. That is what we mean by social cost benefit analysis. Then the project would be having some impact on distribution of income in the society. So, a especially a large government project which probably is going to provide uh, employment to a large number of people should look at these aspects, should try to find out how the distribution of income is going to be affected as a consequence of this. Obviously, if you are talking about social harmony, social order, you should try to have projects which try to make sure that the distribution of income is uh, made as uniform as possible rather than creating pockets of uh, very wealthy people and taking creating pockets which are very poor people because that would not be the right kind of uh, atmosphere for a social order. It would lead to greater social discontent and uh, would probably not be the right thing to do. You know when Amritya Sen our new Nobel laureate is talking in terms of these issues, these are the issues that he is talking about right. 
he is talking essentially about removing poverty, bringing about social order and actually all project that means what he says is that all projects that you undertake the government should be undertaking should be those projects which bring about a more equitable distribution of income in the society and try to reduce the poverty from that point of view. So, there is that dimension to projects and what is the impact on the level of savings and investments in society. So, there could be certain projects which might uh, force you or which might motivate you to save more money, right. There were some projects even the government in mean our own government we had various uh, financial schemes which were like projects of the government national savings scheme certificate and so on and there were incentives on saving. So, those projects were in fact uh, trying to motivate the level of savings and various kinds of investments in society. So, those are again some of the issues which one has to consider in an economic appraisal. Then the economic appraisal has to look at this broader issue of its impact on the fulfillment of national goals especially for larger projects. These could be self sufficiency. So, if you set up a factory for making some degree some equipment which you are probably importing then it is a project in the direction of self sufficiency right. The ISRO's program for missile development is a step towards self sufficiency in the area of development of nuclear weapons in that area. Hmm. So, these are again issues what is the uh, potential as far as generation of employment is concerned. This is another thing which has to be considered. What is the impact of this project on social order? This is an important thing too because uh, again this is very much linked with the uh, situations like if you generate or if you implement projects in which the gulf between the rich and the poor becomes wider this would lead to greater social unrest and disorder is not it that is the kind of thing. So, you try to assess whether these kinds of projects would in fact lead to greater social order. So, these are broadly the issues which one talks about when one is talking about an economic appraisal of a project. Let us now talk about the ecological appraisal of a project as I indicated to you in the beginning this particular appraisal is becoming more and more important because the world at large is becoming more and more aware of the environment and is now realizing that the resources are limited and we should not be uh, spoiling our environment. So, what are the kinds of things that we got to be talking about when we are talking about project appraisal? We should be talking about the impact of projects on the quality of the air that we breathe, that we all breathe. What is the impact of the project on the quality of the water that we all have, drink, consume? What is the impact of the project on the quality of noise in the vicinity and other places? What is the impact of the project on the quality of the vegetation that grows all around you? What is the impact of the project on the quality of human life in general? Now, I am just trying to give you an awareness that these are the various factors. In fact, as you all know standards exist, international standards exist in each of these cases as to what would be the tolerable level of pollution of air or water or so many ppm of water and uh, so much carbon monoxide in the air and things of that kind and how much noise, what decibel level and so on. So, the essential thing really is that when a project is being appraised for these things the appropriate standards must be looked up and you must try to find out whether the project is actually conforming to the kinds of standards, the expectations which are there for those projects. 
then we can look at uh, other issues in ecological appraisal. For instance, major projects such as the following can cause environmental damage, right? Large power plants, major irrigation schemes, industries like bulk drugs, chemicals, leather processing. So, whenever these and other projects which are potentially causing a harm to the society, the important thing for us to do when you are assessing these projects is the likely damage that is to be done and also the cost of restoration. I think this is very important. This is the key issue really that are we taking the adequate amount of steps to restore the quality of life. If we are producing effluents and throwing them into the river rather than throwing them into the river, what is the cost of maybe reprocessing them and trying to make sure that they do not cause harm. So, really speaking we have to talk about both these things the damage and the cost of restoration and that is essentially what the ecological appraisal of a project is really all concerned about. And uh, finally, let us come to perhaps what is known as the most important appraisal of a project namely the financial appraisal of a project. In fact, this is the uh, key to project appraisal and uh, volumes have been written on uh, financial appraisal of projects and trying to compute various kinds of performance parameters and financial ratios so that the to find out whether the project is really worthwhile or not. So, really speaking the financial viability of a project is governed by two major considerations. One is whether the project is really capable of servicing the debt requirements. In order to implement a project invariably most companies and firms have to raise capital and they normally take loans from financial institutions. And what has to be ensured is that the project has a capacity, an intrinsic capacity to pay back those loans. So, there is a special kind of analysis that can be done on the project to find out whether the project is capable of servicing the debt that you take. In fact, almost all financial institutions before they give you any loan will try to find out the servicing debt capability of your project before they give you a loan. And the second thing that is most important is does the project meet your return requirements? Does it give you an appropriate return on your investment? After all you are spending so much of money trying to do so much of effort. Is it giving you some returns for that and you got to find out what those returns are and whether the project is really worthwhile. This is the sort of crux of financial appraisal. Now, financial appraisal often talks about a number of things. We have generally to look at things like what is the investment in the project and what is the phasing of the total cost. Are we required to give the entire investment in one go or is it spread out in three phases over the next five years? This is one of the important things that you have to consider in the investment. Then what are going to be the means of financing the project? From whom are you going to get the loans? And uh, what is the quantum of the money that you are likely to get from various sources? So, how are you going to raise the finances? Here primarily we are talking about the sources and the means of financing. These are very important issues which must all be spelt out in the project feasibility report. Then we have the cost of capital. You see the cost of capital is very important in terms of what is the interest rate that you would like to. So, it depends the cost of capital could be different from different sources. You might be able to raise capital from one source at let us say 10 percent. Maybe if you go to the market you would be required to pay a rate of 18, 20 percent. So, the cost of capital depends upon the source from which you 
raise the capital to a very large extent. What is your projected profitability? What is likely to be your break even point? This is a very important thing too because you would know at what level or what scale of operations would be minimum for you to be able to at least make both ends meet or at least recover your costs, zero profit. And then your objective is to try to always operate at points higher than the break even point so that you are trying to get some money out of it. What are the cash flows in the project? Actually this all analysis is ultimately concerned with establishing what the cash flows in the project are. What is the investment? How do you produce? Uh, what are the likely returns and so on and ultimately you get what are known as the cash flows from the project. I put in so much and I get so much this kind of a thing. So on the basis of this cash, uh, the cash flows, I make certain decisions and I calculate certain parameters. I first want to find out is the investment worthwhile or not and how do I find out whether the investment is worthwhile? Finding out whether the investment is worthwhile, I can compute some important financial parameters. One of them for instance is the net present value. This is the single most important financial parameter for a project. Compute the net present value, compute the internal rate of return for the project compute the payback period and then the second thing is we are talking about the loan returning capability of the project. The loan returning capability of the project is measured in terms of for instance the debt service coverage ratio is the most important ratio used for this purpose and if the debt service coverage ratio is more than about 2 the project is considered worthwhile as far as its debt service. Uh, is required, uh, is concerned. And third thing is the level of risk. The level of risk would talk about what are the chances of making a certain amount of money. So uh, maybe you could use probability theory to uh, express your returns in the form of a probability distribution and that would actually tell you that uh, this project is risky or how it is risky. Now for instance, let us see what the problem is like. See the problem really is that we have a stream of cash flows available. We know that this is the investment and we have certain returns. These returns could be unequal over the time periods because initially you could get a lesser return then there could be more return, then the returns could also fall and so on. So let us say that over these uh, various periods a stream of cash flows is available to us not. So what can be done is really speaking we try to find out for instance if the interest rate is 0, the total amount of money that uh, could be uh, taken could be computed as the return in the first period plus the return in the second period plus the return in the third period and so on minus the total cost. So maybe I make this much money. So if I plot it here I could say that this is the amount of money that I have at 0 percent rate of interest. Obviously if I use uh, a higher value of interest what is going to happen is that this kind of rate of return, this kind of uh, NPV for this particular project is going to typically go down in this manner which means that if I have an interest rate i, if I successively choose higher values of the interest rate, my total net present value that is what we are talking about NPV right, we are talking about NPV here. So if the NPV of the product project is actually dependent upon the rate of interest. So if you choose a particular rate of interest from the stream of cash flows you can establish what it is and the point where the NPV is 0 this particular point 
the value of i this actually defines my internal rate of return the IRR yeah. So, really speaking the computation for the NPV and the IRR is actually derived from the stream of cash flows in this manner and you can uh, in fact for different values of i if we compute the NPV and plot this there would be a point where the IRR would be where this curve would have 0 NPV and that is the internal rate of return and the physical meaning of this particular internal rate of return is that it is offering this particular investment proposal or this very project is offering us so much return on the capital. So, if the internal rate of return is for instance higher than the bank rate of interest for instance, then this project is really worthwhile because it gives you a higher rate of return than the bank rate of return or for that matter any rate of return that you are capable of earning easily right. This is uh, one of the things that you can obviously be doing. Of course, there could be complications to the IRR. This is what we considered was there was a single element of cost and there were variations in, uh, in terms of the revenues were in the same direction. However, if there were costs, revenues, some other costs, other revenues, a complication could arise in this and the complication could be of this nature. You could have a situation where the net present value goes down and then tends to oscillate and if it tends to oscillate this would happen if you have the cost here a revenue followed by a cost followed by a revenue and so on that is if there was this kind of possibility then it would not be clear as to what the internal rate of return is because there would be multiple rates of return. In fact, this is one reason why the internal rate of return is generally not a preferred uh, index uh, rather we use the NPV for a specified value of i as an index to find out the. Similarly, let us see for instance another important financial parameter which is the payback period. The payback period what happens is again we start with the stream of cash flows and here we talk about the unrecovered money in this axis. So, in the beginning everything is unrecovered is not it lot of it the whole thing is unrecovered and over time let us say this money in this case would be recovered let us say somewhere here you would think of this kind of a period of recovery. So, this is the unrecovered money and this is the time period. So, at this particular point of time you have been able to recover the entire money. So, this is known as the payback period. this is the payback period. Let us say this could be the payback period for a certain value of i say i is equal to 0 that is this is the undiscounted payback period. What could happen is if you want to use discounting typically you would have something like this and this is the increasing value of i typically. So, what is going to happen is really if I increase if I use different values of i my payback period would be increasing from this value to this value to this value right. Because what is effectively happening is that we are discounting the present value of these future returns is declining. So, you are going to recover your initial investment later. So, really this is the effect of the interest rate on the discount period. So, again choosing the value of i therefore, i is also an important parameter we said that i is the cost of capital cost of capital has to be determined realistically and then you can choose perform these kinds of analysis. Now, actually financial analysis is much more involved and much more detailed in the next lecture we are going to devote ourselves primarily to only the financial appraisal of projects in greater detail right. So, in conclusion we can say that uh, when you are talking about a project feasibility report this includes market and demand analysis, this includes technical analysis, 
this includes financial analysis and this includes socio-economic analysis apart from ecological analysis. So a project feasibility report will actually give us this and the purpose of this entire analysis is that it helps the decision maker in making the right choice of the project essentially. So a project feasibility report is a document which gives you the appraisal for various kinds of projects and you have this kind of analysis going on. Let us try to summarize some of the key issues in project appraisal which we talked about in this lecture. Some of the key issues are for instance in the market appraisal of a project in the market analysis we are talking primarily about these two things the market potential market and the market share. In the technical analysis we are talking about technical viability and making sensible choices. In the financial analysis we are talking about risk and return primarily. In the economic analysis of a project we are talking about the benefits and costs in shadow prices and other impacts on the society in the economic analysis and in the ecological analysis we are talking about the environmental damage and the restoration measures which can be done to the project. So we can see actually that the process of uh, project selection is actually a process of begins with the process of project identification which involves idea generation. This is going through a funnel which is the process of screening and this screening leads to a smaller number of ideas which are now subjected to project appraisal. So we talked about project appraisal, a project appraisal is a detailed microscopic look through a magnifying glass at the various aspects of the marketing demand, ecological issues, financial issues and other issues pertaining to a project and once the project appraisal is complete we select one star project and that is the purpose of the whole exercise that we choose the best project selection. So this is what uh, the whole exercise of project selection really is all about.